I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? This is Matt once again. What about to another video? There's another paid request this time from Elbin. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos or topics, reactions, reviews, re reviews, it could be pretty much anything. Feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for Zodiac from 2007. Now, it's directed by David Fincher, which some of his films I enjoy. My personal favorite is actually The Game. But I do like Fight Club. I do like Seven. Of course, Alien 3, for me, is his worst. I hate Alien 3. But, you know, Zodiac, I do like. I don't mind. I don't love it, though. It's a very, very much pol a police procedural film. It's more about the inner workings of the newspapers and... Here's the thing about this film. The acting is very solid. Jake Gyllenhaal as a cartoonist, a political cartoonist, who gets more and more obsessed with this and starts even finding things out that other people didn't. Robert Downey Jr. is great as a reporter who then you know becomes friends with Jake Gyllenhaal's character. Mark Ruffalo, who would be the Hulk in the Marvel Avengers movies. He's solid as a cop that, again... Gets more and more obsessed, and he's trying to deal with it. And there's even a point that he can't even see the movie Dirty Harry because it's inspired by the Zodiac, so he leaves the movie theater. And there's other people I recognize. Elias Coteus, Casey Jones from the 1990 Ninja Turtles film. He's in there as a local sheriff, local cop. Anthony Edwards from Miracle Mile, Top Gun. He's a cop who's partnered with Mark Ruffalo. Uh, it's a good cast. The way it's shot, it does feel like the 70s. There's some really nice camera work, like where you're on top of this cab, this driving and riding a lawn, and then pretty soon after, someone gets shot. Certain scene transitions were showcasing the years and the environment make you feel the mood and the changes of the scenes. When the Zodiac kills someone and the slow motion to accentuate the point of the killings and there's some decent moments of suspense. The Charles Fleischer, yes, Charles Fleischer, the voice of Roger Rabbit himself who could be a possible suspect and Jake Gyllenhaal's talking with him and they're in a the basement and the way Charles Fleischer's acting and then you hear something are you sure you're by yourself are you sure there's no one here if there's someone up the stairs uh, that's a nicely set up scene directorial wise uh, lighting wise again and the way Charles Fleischer plays that scene off of is he just is he worked with the killer is he just 
being creepy for creep's sake? Is it just him saying, oh, whatever, dude, get the fuck out of here? Don't know for sure. Uh, some of the song choices, I like the song, The Hurdy Dirty Man. Dun, 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 dun. I think it's called the the hurdy dirty man. Doing some nice song choices. So overall, it's a decent film. Why do I not love it? It's not really the movie's fault. Uh, first off, it's a very long film. Some people didn't feel the length. I did. I say it's not the movie's fault because when you're tackling the Zodiac killer, it's that sad, but Ultimately, you can't do anything about it motif of it was never solved. So no matter what, you're dealing with a two, two and a half hour movie about a case that's a mystery. People chasing clues for something that inevitably was never solved because it was never solved in real life. There was a suspect and there's like a more than likely suspect more than likely that was a guy, but you can't be truly definitive because, again, that wasn't how it was in real life. Unless you wanted to do what Quentin Tarantino, what he did in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where you just change history. But, and that's kind of the, the catch-22 on doing a movie on the Zodiac. That's why I think there are people that do Zodiac type of movies, like Dirty Harry, because then you could have a more satisfying ending or finality of the ending or more sum up of the ending here it's more it flounders is not the right word but it's kind of we'll go around in circles because the cops that's part of the it's like that's part of the point is that all this journey all this heartache all of this battle was completely pointless at the end of the day and you're sort of spinning around with the characters for two what two hours and 40 minutes at least the version i saw and you just this fruitless venture because the real life unsolvedness of the case and like is that really the movie's fault no it's not the movie's fault. It's it just one of those, those things that it just is. Unless you want to come up with more of a fictionalized ending. And that's kind of the thing with me is that, you know, they're following these clues. There's shoe prints, there's military boosts, there's jurisdictions. All oh, the killer breaks his patterns to make it harder. Someone claims to be a Zodiac. Oh, there's a... a moment on TV with this lawyer and then this TV talk show host. Was that the killer? Oh, maybe it wasn't. He was just fucking around. Oh, the Zodiac takes credit for other stuff in the press. And then also because of that, the way it's filmed, you don't really follow the character as characters. Like Jay Gyllenhaal. He has a wife and kids and really all you know about is that he's obsessed. His wife leaves him. And he's more obsessed with his case. So you don't really follow them as characters. Same with Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. seems like a character I would like to follow. And like to be along the ride with. Because I like Robert Downey Jr.'s persona. His personality of this character. At one point he gets pieces of this shirt. This bloody shirt in the mail. He deems it as a threat. And that's where the, the character goes a bit more off the, way, off the rails. With drugs. But then he disappears. He disappears for good chunks of it. And then, again, disappears for pretty much the whole third act of the movie. And it's a shame because, oh, I like Robert Downey Jr. I want to see what follow that character. But if he left, if he went away, if he's like, I don't want to do anything with the case. That's why part of me wishes David Fincher did a movie that was similar to Zodiac. Not an actual about the case of Zodiac. Because you have to follow these. And maybe that's why David Fincher do it. He wanted to show a tale of this fruitless venture. That was part of the real American history. He succeeded with that. But 
there's no way it can be a satisfying watch for me. So then it's not a satisfying watch. And again, that's not really the movie's fault. That's just the tale, the story, the real life proclivities of it. That, again, you're watching a two, two and a half hour movie of a mystery that all, at the end of the day, like I say it's just tear just kind of spinning in circles. Oh, we think we got the guy. Maybe he's ambidextrous. Well, it doesn't match. Or that doesn't match. Or the fingerprints don't match. Or this doesn't match. As going through the years. And at times, like, wow, we've jumped this many years? Wait, wait, we jumped in the 80s? Oh, for one scene? Wait, now we're in 1991? And again, there's good actors, but you don't really get much of them as characters. Which I guess was the point, was that this is more about, like, again, it's like a police procedural or investigative reporter procedural I'm like, well, if I want to watch the investigative reporter, I'll watch all the president's men. Because of that tale, there is an ending. Like, there is a finality. Here, there really isn't. And then... <sighs> there were times I got bored with it, to be perfectly honest, because... It kind of just runs and repeat, runs and repeat, runs and repeat. We don't know who this guy is. Maybe it's this guy. I don't know. We don't have evidence. Where's the evidence? Looked into it. Some books that were taken. Is it this guy Rick Marshall? Oh, maybe it's this guy Alan. And really, again, what was tear tearing me through was good actors, nice cinematography, decent soundtrack, some nice camera work, which David Fincher has done. As much as I hate Alien 3, there's some good camera work with the alien POV and then it goes upside down. There's some nice camera work in that. Panic Room, another one I enjoy. Really nice camera work in that. It's just there's other David Fincher films I enjoy like Panic Room, Fight Club. I mentioned, you know, The Game 7. And... Now, although are they shorter movies, not only do they have a bit more to the characters, like you get to know the characters more. I mean, like Robert, Robert, I'm interested in Robert Downey Jr.'s persona, but then he disappears for good chunks, and then he's pretty much gone, and it takes a bit for Mark Ruffle to come into play, and then you don't really know about him, except Anthony Edwards leaves because he can't do it anymore. Or he can't watch Dirty Harry because the references to the Zodiac. But you don't really get to know much about him as a character. It's just, oh, I like him because I thought he did made, he gave a good performance. They're kind of just tools to be used to tell this procedural story of... We got this letter. We followed through. Ambidextrous. Well, it's not really the case. Oh, this guy, Robert Downey Jr. got this in the mail. Hey, it's the late 70s. Jake Jono wants to help. He looks at books. Hey, these books were taken. Now he's getting calls with his heavy breathing. Is it Rick Marshall? Oh, is it Alan? Is it this one guy? Hey, this guy likes this film. You showed the film at this point. Again, it's... But, like I said, there's never big finality to it. And like I said, I, I don't think it needed to be... Almost three hours long. I, I don't think it needed to be that long. For me. Because it did feel like it was kind of just repeating itself. Again and again. And because you're not really delving much into the characters. Or the lives of some of these characters. I'm enjoying them again. Just because I like the actors. Not so much for the characters. Like, can I cannot really say Jake Gyllenhaal's character was great. I think his performance was good, but there's really not much to the character. Like, Robert Downey Jr. seems like an interesting character, but we don't get to know... Like I said, I'm just repeating myself. Like, this movie, kind of repeating itself. So, it is a well-made movie. Like I said, the music, the 
cinematography, the ma way it made it feel like the 70s. There's even a point where Jay Jono meets Robert Downey Jr. and Pawn is playing on the TV. <laughs> that was a nice touch. And it seems like they did try to go into detail on the case. So if maybe you're someone who's curious you're curious about the Zodiac case, and that's why Robert that's why David Fincher made it. For those who are curious about the Zodiac case, this is what happened and this is how and why the police were not able to catch this person and all the whether the red tape or the inconsistencies and the frustration of just how fruitless this venture became, which is rather depressing, because if it was this guy Allen in 1991, he died of a heart attack before he was questioned again. And, uh, there you go. And if it wasn't him, if it was someone else, either they died some other way, or they said, fuck it, I'm gone, or they started kill, or they killed more people, and just didn't put the Zodiac moniker. And you don't really know 100% for sure. And then, again, if you're telling the story of the Zodiac, it's not, that's not the movie's fault. So, that's why I'm kind of... It was interesting for me, because I've seen the film before. It was interesting to see once, but it's not really a movie I would go back towards. Again, I need to compare to other David Fincher films or, or so forth. I know it's getting pretty dark, but maybe that fits with the mood, so... Zodiac, uh, like I said, it's okay. It's not something I would watch much. I probably would never watch this film again. But it's not a bad film. As Jen is just, I I I've heard about Zodiac now. I probably know as much as the cops do now because of it. There can be no satisfying finale, so it's like, oh, we spent two and a half hours. Yep, it's a fruitless venture. I'm like, oh, great, okay. I don't know what else to say about it. That's the thing, when I get to the end, I'm like, I don't know what else to say about it. And I think the people who were part of that case, they don't know what to say about it either. It is what it was, and it was what it is. It was a time in history with confusion and uh, that's just the way it is so with that said thanks for watching we'll see you guys later bye bye